one other story to bring to your attention, or at least LBC's Charlotte Wright is going to bring it to your attention now. And if I tell you that I was feeding the cat this morning, and uh, I don't know why, whether it's because of the cold weather, but they are, they're like bottomless pits at the moment, my cats. They are eating so much. Every morning I wake up to them demanding for I was feeding them with a slight sense of annoyance. And then I just sort of wondered, well, they're not going to be around forever. And I just felt really sad. And I thought, God, how are we going to explain it to the kids when the cats eventually pop their clog? It's going to be awful. Which is why there's nothing funny, despite the headlines, about news that police are now storing the mutilated corpses of 170 cats and other animals in freezers as the hunt for the so-called Croydon cat killer continues. Charlotte Wright's here with the latest. Yes, well, it's astonishing, really, isn't it? It's like something out of a crime drama or, you know, Sherlock Holmes. Um, but it's actually a very serious problem. As you say, anyone who's listening to this now who has children nearby, I might want to just turn the radio down because some of the detail in this is actually quite disturbing and could be quite upsetting. Um, I'll just explain what's happening and what has been happening over the past year. Cats are being discovered in the Croydon area in the South London area decapitated, missing a paw, a tail, sometimes even their head. And what's even more shocking about this is the scale of this, James. We're being told that the number of suspected victims has quadrupled in the past six months. It's been going on for more than a year. The first victim was found back in October last year. And since then, it's thought that the killer or killers, if there are more than one, have been going on these sort of sporadic killing sprees. Uh, we're being told that animals are being discovered five or six times a week now, all with these same signature mutilations. Last month, it got really bad. 13 dead animals found in 13 days. So a very scary time for the community, for people living in Croydon. It's thought that it's spread as well, uh, sort of across the South London area. I was in Richmond a little while ago where it was thought um, a cat had been discovered there as well. So people are, you know, reluctant to let their cats out in the area. The police have said that they're investigating this, but it doesn't look like this problem is going to go away. They have, haven't have made any arrests yet at all, um, and there's, there doesn't seem to be any leads over who this person or who these people are. They, well, did, did they have a view on, on whether it is person or people. You mentioned the signature mutilations, which is the correct terminology to use, even if it is, as you say, a little discomforting. Do, do the police think it is one person or...? Well, the police haven't given much information um, on, on what they think. There is a charity who um, sort of take it upon themselves to um, collect in these, these cats and contact the RSPCA and notify the police, and they think it is one person who's going around okay. uh, doing this. I have actually also spoken to a vet a little while ago who said that his cat was killed and um, was mutilated, but he thinks it's a fox, um, and he doesn't think there is one person. That's been disputed by the charity, because I put those, those claims to the charity and they said, no, we, we think there is one person out there killing these cats. And finally, Charlotte Wright, speaking of charities, does the founder of South Norwood Animal Rescue and Liberty really go by the name Boudicca Rising? Yeah, that's the lady that I spoke to. That's what she calls herself. Boudicca Rising, fantastic. It's replaced Minty Clinch as my favourite name that I've come across in recent months. Charlotte Wright, many thanks indeed. No laughing matter, this story. And I, I make no apology for the fact I'm going to stay with it, or at least I'm going to ask Charlotte to keep an eye on it on your behalf. Because as I said this morning, when you, you think about your own pets, you, you realise why the emotional bond is so profound and, and, and so many people in South London will be so upset and potentially traumatised by this experience. 24 minutes after 12, talking of traumatised, let's get back to Brexit.